Welcome everyone to this last uh, session uh, for this 2021 edition. We will deal with artificial intelligence, uh, data, and so basically what everything was looking for. So I am Luca De Bias, and together I am with uh, Luciano Floridi uh, from Oxford and Mauro Felicori, Councillor for Culture of the Region Emilia Romagna. But first of all, we receive a message from the Ministry of Education. Stefano Bonaccini per avermi invitato a questa edizione di R2D. Thank you very much to the President of the Region Emilia Romagna, Stefano Bonaccini, for inviting me to this edition 2021. It's an extraordinary fair of innovation, of innovation capacity, of innovation skills, of intelligence, which has seen the formation of many years of capacity, of innovation skills, 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 Quest'anno è ancora più importante perché R2D non è particolarmente testimonia, mi dice anche il titolo di poter essere un'opera di 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 Romania is quite a unique place, as there are very few in the world, and it has been able to demonstrate uh, how it is possible to collect uh, important skills, important innovation, and has been a testimony of its uh, capacity in terms of uh, big data and capacity, which can work effectively only by uh, keeping ourselves with the right skills, human skills, human capital skills. Research to business is at the forefront uh, and uh, specifically dealing with uh, a very delicate topic speaking about infrastructure we are speaking about uh, we are speaking about platform and therefore speaking about uh, infrastructure Inf speaking about infrastructures uh, means uh, being equipped with something uh, material uh, in the past the companies used to provide only services something abstract uh, but now they are providing uh, infrastructures so something very material so what we are witnessing is an asymmetry on the one hand the global platforms while on the other hand the capacity of adjustment of these platforms uh, depends on our national skills at European level we need to catch up because no of none of these platforms is based in Europe and this implies the extraordinary level of the work which has been carried out in Bologna which has uh, received a host, uh, the center of super, the supercomputer and the, uh, the atmosphere and, the, um, and, and, and also the climate center, which have been moved to Bologna in its technopole, technological hub. So in this sense, uh, the connection between big data and artificial intelligence is demonstrated as a Luciano Floridi can testifies. So it is precisely there which is the crossroads of development. Development is closer to us than we think. I believe that we are not following the future, we are leading it because what Emilia Romagna is demonstrating is that Italy can play a role at the forefront and can bring its own additional value and also so political additional value, which is why this uh, edition of the conference is absolutely relevant. Our Prime Minister clearly said in Wales, uh, last week in Wales, so he clearly stated that not only innovation and research, but also digital and sustainability are fundamental tools to relaunch our economy. This is our starting point. This, has all, this is what has always been considered consider the starting point by Emilia Romagna. This is the basis to start growing, on which to build up, to shape an economy which is a sustainable and more fair and just economy throughout times. These are the values which have always been there to Emilia Romagna. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. I believe 
that the noise that we could uh, hear was in the background of uh, the minister. So the noise, there were some sirens going around, so we'd like to apologize for the noise you could hear, but it was in the original video of uh, the minister. Despite the noise, uh, what he said was very important. He said uh, digital is development, and digital development is the capacity of culture, the capacity of society, of grasping of grasping such opportunities. The title of this conference is Research to Business. So this is our specific focus. However, the question is, how can we tackle the problem of a country which needs and which can catch up the distance, which can fill the gap? But to do that, in order to do that, require to make a substantial cultural leap in terms of opening to the digital, to the digital border, to, the, to its digital boundaries. We know that we are ranking basically last according to the European Union Commission uh, ranking, digital ranking. However, we are the very last one. If we are ranking absolutely last uh, in the in the ranking of the European Commission in terms of technology, that's why it becomes so important for us to make the most of the digital, of the infrastructural digital. So make the most of the knowledge culture. Over the last uh, year and a half, uh, we have witnessed a digital boom. And uh, Italian companies have moved online to sell online, so there has been a catch up in this from this perspective. Uh, however, we are still lagging behind, especially from a cultural point of view. So now with uh, Luciano, we can start uh, discussing this specific topic, which are the priorities uh, to be undertaken, to be implemented. Uh, we have already listened to Patrizio Bianchi, the Minister for Education, which has already given us some, some important input. So the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Uh, the possibilities were those that were highlighted by Minister Bianchi to be at the avant-garde, to be ahead, making that leap forward, which doesn't mean following all the stages that others have followed before us and to replicate what other countries have done, but rather to make a technological leap. Um, in other words, uh, sometimes going uh, beyond what is legacy and uh, going to uh, things which are more recent, more effective. To be able to do this, as we know very well, and this is key, the last thing that one can uh, do is to spend in hardware and facilities uh, tablets, computers, because we've done that in the past. I remember when I was younger, I used to visit schools and there were rooms full of computers, filled with computers that used to then be thrown away. So we have to spend, let's spend a lot now, but spending in the right way. And what we're now discussing, what makes the demand uh, manage the supply and not vice versa. That's when things work. Today, we don't have a population that understands that this is not a toy. It's not just communication. It's not uh, an app to communicate with our auntie and our granddad. Um, this culture has to take roots. And after the pandemic, we want to get out of it. So there's uh, remote uh, learning, uh, digital green passports after vaccination. So all the things that became necessary following the pandemic. Otherwise, here in Italy, we'd 
would still be baiting whether the cloud is still useful, uh, whether it's time at last to really go full in with uh, e-commerce. So let's really uh, produce the fruits of what we've experienced and uh, turn Italy into a country which is fully digital. And then France is an example. It's not California. It's not the usual South Korea. In terms of e-commerce, uh, France is light years ahead of Italy and for some time. We used to uh, talk about these things uh, years ago with you as well. So then came the tragedy. The tragedy opened our eyes, and now let's make sure that this tragedy was not useless from the point of view of the school. Can you please point things out a little more in detail? Many people have complained in how the uh, school interpreted the way to uh, provide remote uh, teaching and learning. Uh, it was like a system earthquake. Uh, households had difficulties with students studying from home, and also the students were not comfortable and found it a struggle to follow their lessons. And there were a few extraordinary exceptions to this, and there was some embarrassment in doing the things that were being done before, but using um, the internet. So this is an experience. What can we learn from this? We shouldn't throw away uh, the digital experience. What lesson can we take home? There are different important experiences experiences in this. These things were improvised, we should remember this, because the pandemic uh, uh, arrived all of a sudden. But even in the uh, since the 90s, we have been talking about platforms for digital learning and so on for decades. So this means uh, that we can't just uh, improvise using this platform ver versus the other platform. We've had to uh, make do with what we had. And we were a little lagging behind in this. So I would call this under a single umbrella, which means that the digital factor gives you an added value. It gives you something more rather than just sending a PDF online. Uh, the digital enables you to customize teaching, and the ordinary mass teaching face-to-face uh, -face, uh, doesn't enable you to be pr careful and attentive with each student day after day. So there can be a support for monitoring, which is useful, or else all the data you have on data. Schools never able to do this. How can you uh, conduct uh, a comprehensive and analysis if, uh, for instance, uh, one class was more successful than another. Amazon knows exactly on electronic uh, text where people go back repeatedly to the same text. These are the elements that are useful. These are intuitive elements. That is the real digital, and then it becomes complementary. since. Uh, Socrates' uh, lesson is in person, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, those are the privileged uh, approaches, but we have to do the best of what we can do at our best, and not a lesson uh, the same for everyone. What I have seen when people complain is that what we've done with digital could have been done in the 80s with VHS uh, audio cassettes that my parents used to learn English. That is not what digital uh, can help us in. So shall we succeed in going beyond this uh, paradigm and do things differently? Yes, this is the case. Bologna is 
also the place of uh, an important school uh, text publisher. He showed me his strategy, traditional books alongside a code that enable people for free, those who purchase the book, to do other things online, exercises online, interacting with others and where you are uh, based on, where you rank based on the national average. So it was like added value and extra services for those who bought the book. And only 5% of the people buying the book were using these ancillary services online. That was five years ago. So we need to open up uh, to this to seek these opportunities that Luciano is mentioning, which integrate with and in that integrate with the system. Socrates told us how to approach it, as he was saying. Luciano Florid is uh, an example of the attractiveness of the Emilia-Romagna model. In September, there will be a new research center that you will uh, be at the helm of and of obviously working there and in Oxford as well. Uh, and you will be devoted to the Emilia uh, part as well. <clears throat> uh, Mauro Felicori now, he is the counselor for culture in the, the uh, Emilia Romagna regional authorities. I'd like to ask him what is his view of what's been happening in these uh, early months of this year, where we've seen many gaps. Museums, uh, places of access to culture have been closed, and digital was the only system available uh, to be used, and it saw an increase in its use. Here again, naturally, there is uh, an issue related with the quality of these experiences, digital experiences. What have we learned from this story and how can we move forward from here and increase the quality in the cultural, in the culture uh, experience? Mauro Felicori, you should switch on your microphone. Yes, uh, I've uh, listened very carefully to the professor's words. Uh, I consider myself uh, an apostle of the digital revolution. and. Um, I mean, I have a quite an extreme approach, and sometimes I'm quite very doubtful. I wonder whether I am too exaggerated. Uh, and so I was uh, really comforted by his words, because uh, our problem in the cultural field is uh, exactly, precisely what the professor portrayed, uh, and namely, the cultural system, speaking about libraries, museums, so on and so forth, was already lagging behind uh, in digital use. And it was a force to discover the digital field because of the pandemic. But despite that, is uh, opposing resistance uh, to the digital development. So there is an ideological issue here to be discussed, to be tackled. Uh, so uh, there is a different vision of the world. Uh, and what we have in Italy in the public sector is a conservative point of view, which fights the technological development. We have been witnesses of uh, great stories. For example, we have seen, uh, we have witnessed that the access to digital libraries, uh, which is uh, offered for free by our libraries, but they're not very, it's not very straightforward because first uh, you have uh, to go in person and enroll in person. Well, this service, uh, this service has seen a considerable increase uh, during the lockdown and after the lockdown, the, the number dropped down again. But I see, I've seen many 
of the uh, I, I, I've seen uh, libraries uh, putting more effort not in promoting the digital um, service, but uh, more effort put to enhance uh, the loan of books, uh, as if uh, the loan of books, uh, the borrowing of book, uh, was uh, an anchor not to be taken by the vortex of innovation. And the same applies to museums. Uh, museums should become a real machine of communication. They should offer uh, not only storytelling, but also story living. Uh, so basically, they should be able to provide for experiences. Uh, but the, the reality is that the majority of the Italian museums are lacking the very basics. Uh, for example, in Bologna, there is this experiment uh, uh, of this museum with, that is measuring with the sensors uh, the path followed by the majority of the visitors uh, where they stop the most. Uh, and it recalled me of uh, a very old uh, research made, uh, made by a museum in the past for monitoring uh, of visitors visiting the Vatican museums. And these results showed that the maximum time a visitor stops also before the most important works of art doesn't exceed one, two seconds. So what I'm trying to say is that there is an ideological problem here. For the digital to be adopted by the public sector, museum directors need to consider their relationship with the, with the public, with the audience, as a priority for them, which is not like this at the moment. They, Italian museums don't have any data figures about their own public, their own visitors. And, uh, for example, uh, museums are not considered at, as the same as companies, as firms. But what happened is that uh, now, that now, for example, uh, more services can be provided. For example, orchestra can provide uh, streaming tickets. Uh, or, for example, ballet is another sector benefit, benefiting from digital services. So, for example, a ballet can be constructed and directed to be enjoyed live or to be enjoyed online. So, different design for different use. But other examples, such as uh, documentaries uh, that uh, may have gathered 100 people if watched uh, live, uh, including the families of the director. But then, if sold online on the online platform, so they could sell 10, 20,000 tickets. So also the issue of uh, how to enhance uh, the cinema world, well, platforms uh, can change everything. Platforms can create uh, monopoles, but also create pluralism of uh, cultural enjoyment. Therefore, this is a fantastic world that is awaiting us, uh, and we need uh, to convince everyone who is uh, frightened, which is unfortunately the majority, which is not like this. So, I, and I'm happy that I, I, can, I can find an ally in the Professor Floridi. I believe, yes, that he can support you in your cause indeed and champion you. But Mauro, well, I believe that the problem doesn't apply only to the digital world. I believe that something needs to be 
be clarified. When you speak about a company, about a firm, you're not speaking about personal profit. You are using the word firm or company, you are referring to an efficient organization, an efficient organization able to work for the common uh, good for the common um, for the common interest and uh, this is very important uh, and uh, this recalls me of uh, of um, an anecdote when uh, this person this former president had visited Emilia Romagna and he was so surprised by the model proposed by the region and uh, it was it was 1990s and he, he identified uh, in Emilia Romagna the right model and the person who was amazed by Emilia Romagna was an American president uh, it was president Clinton and uh, the assistant of uh, Clinton told him uh, Look, that they are communist, and the answer of Clinton was, well, they may well well be, they may as well being um, communist, but they know how to make profit, and they know it how to do it better better than us. So, Clinton immediately identified in Emilia Romagna. Uh, a model of development, uh, a system uh, to work for the common interest. So Bianchi mentioned it earlier. Culture and technology surrounding this technology provides for the development of our age. How can we guide, lead this technology and share this technology because uh, sometimes it is uh, frightening and technology should not frighten directors uh, or other people in charge of institutions. Uh, technology does not replace physical places. Technology is complementary, it complements uh, the existing communication, widening opportunities for cultural institutions, for educational institutions, uh, and for anything that we need uh, in order to start a new model. So this aspect uh, makes me think that, uh, I mean, Italy, Ital Italy is very, we know that Italian reality is uh, very much uh, Far right, and we know that Emilia Romagna is a leading region in our, in our country, and uh, we know that uh, Emilia Romagna is considered a communist region, but with a very specific idea of what it is to make enterprise uh, to be an efficient organization. So, how can we narrate this Emilia Romagna model? for it not to be frightening uh, and being uh, a model, an example to follow. Is, is the question for me? Well, yes, it's uh, it, the question is for you because then I have another question for Mr. Floridi. Well, I use the word uh, company to define the maximum concentration of uh, management knowledge. So it has nothing to do with profit. In the cultural field, what I like to say is that for library or museum directors, uh, also when we have uh, income, also when we have an income, our turnover is still a cultural turnover. So uh, we measure our turnover in terms of uh, book loans, for example, of visitors. And one important thing still, we matter about what these people learn. I mean, when they enter, what they think, what do they think when they go out, when they exit the museum, whether they change, they change their perspective or not. What have, what can they understand in the museum? 
culture requires commitments, but uh, it's not everything. Not everything is a suffering. I believe that visitors can be encouraged, uh, can learn uh, an additional name of a painter, an additional name of a saint. They will have learned uh, more or less to distinguish one age of Chotto from the other. And uh, I believe uh, um, that uh, what we, our objective is for them to learn a couple of things more. That is our turnover. It's a multiplication for me. How many people multiplied for the knowledge that they have acquired? That is our turnover. And that turnover needs to be calculated in the right way, with the right measure. Well, it's very hard for me to answer your question because uh, I have a long standing experience in uh, leading fighting, uh, in leading fights uh, on. Uh, cultural politics and on cultural policies, while I have uh, much less experience in the IT field. So it's for me very difficult to answer the first part of your question. So I don't know which tools to, to use, but the problem that you mentioned is not only a technological problem, but as the professor said, uh, it's also a problem in demonstrating what we are earning from an experience, uh, an experience enabling us to do something, something we have wished for and which we could not do in the past, but which now we can do effectively. So I believe uh, that the final word uh, is left to actions. Actually, you answered me, Franco. Uh, you, you answered me. You answered me because uh, you said the museum should be a place of meeting educational needs, lifelong learning needs of people, and the needs to do it, uh, not uh, putting shame on the visitor, but just uh, uh, leading him, pushing him to improve themselves and uh, really encouraging him to do and to improve himself. So that is the answer to my question. And I believe that digital technology can help in that because indeed the digital, I mean, the I like to now pass the, and I, to give the, the floor to Luciano Floridi and speaking about digital. I mean, Luciano is not an IT expert, but when he speaks about this, well, we realize that he knows quite a lot of it, quite a bunch. So the moment of designing, designing Digital solutions implies again, collecting data on people, providing services, and so on and so forth. So the designing phase, the design phase is a moment when efficiency and resilience and ethics are discussed. And you have tackled that. And once I asked him, what is exactly the problem of IT? ethics. Well, he said it is something it is ethics if it doesn't hurt, hurt anyone. This is a very interesting uh, answer. So could you please elaborate on that? Could you please tell us something more about this statement of yours? Uh, so when someone being frightened by innovation needs to be aware that there is also a benefit side. How can we narrate digital innovation in culture, education, within institutions, so in, within territories such as Emilia-Romagna, so that uh, this designing phase uh, can pass this message? That's uh, a huge question. As usual, uh, let me refer to uh, Mauro uh, Felicori and let's see if we can both answer this question. You said something very interesting. I'm going to refer to what he said, uh, the issue of profit and value and uh, business. Uh, 
we're talking about a mechanism capable of uh, creating wealth. But people stop and say, wealth is money. No, wealth, well-being. Wealth is that something of which you have abund an abundance of good things that you want and a shortage of negative things that you don't want. And this is also synonymous of innovation. Innovation enables you to do things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to do, like going to the moon, and uh, not doing things that you don't want to do, like dishwashing. So this double work, two legs, uh, doing what you otherwise wouldn't be able to do, and uh, the opposite, and this generates wealth. Now, to uh, answer your question, if we were able to uh, narrate uh, the wealth produced, not only economically, which is key, and we all have something to share, but culturally and uh, health-wise as well, I hope that those listening don't think that I'm uh, very anomalous. Going to the museum means going away from home and then coming back home. And this is not a trivial exercise today. Some elderly, for instance, today, they go to the square, go to the museum, and then come back home. 10,000 steps which are necessary every day. And this means socializing. You didn't do it alone. You're not a millionaire who has the museum open just for him or her for the weekend. That was the prince with his own gallery. The museum is a social place, so you socialize with other people. There might be students disturbing you, but that puts you in contact uh, with experiences otherwise you wouldn't have if you stayed at home alone. So these are the different ways of being wealthy. And they have to be narrated. There is a private gallery in Rome, for instance. This is an example. The owners, Velasquez, Caravaggio, Tintoretto, splendid things, they're tired of people uh, taking pictures with their cameras. And so they decided to work in favor of the digital. They charge five euros for whatever pictures you want to take. You can take pictures of everything. This means that there is wealth twice. There's cultural uh, wealth. Uh, the uh, gallery makes money. And then these pictures uh, circulate on the uh, social media everywhere in the world, in Japan and in distant places. So you can take a picture providing you're not using your flash. So this is just a trivial example of what? That bringing together uh, actions of good narrative, the different experiences of wealth that cultural experience can provide brings us back to digital. We can do what otherwise I couldn't do and not do what I uh, could do. And, and we do all this at a cost which is now much less in terms also of the environmental impact that it otherwise could have had without the technology. So narration is not just telling stories, but it is telling the story that economics makes sense. You go to the pizzeria, uh, they're nice, there's a, a parking. Uh, the uh, pizza might be good a a anywhere, but that pizza is uh, better because you have ancillary services that uh, help you more. Can I take a picture? of me pulling faces. Yes, you can take a picture of uh, the dish uh, before you at the restaurant. All this is possible in the 21st century. As Mauro was saying earlier, uh, we still have hindrances or no, let's forbid pictures in the museum, otherwise they're going to publish them. But etymologically, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, because the word public and publication come from the same etymology. 
But this is another topic, and it leads us to startups. Startups uh, use this as their bread and butter, and they uh, take advantage and they use the wealth of our capital, which in Italy is uh, advantageous. So going back to what Bianchi was saying, being avant-garde today is conceivable. It's a question of understanding where we are going, where we want to go. And when Mauro says, but this should be the future, let's listen to these people, because otherwise we're always running up and we're never up to standard. We're following suit, those who did it before us. Innovation, startup, environmentalism. Uh, you explain this with the Clinton example. We have in Italy something that we can work off on, and let's work on people and then infrastructures as well. Mauro Felicori, you could perhaps uh, turn this around and also include this approach. At the end of the day, we could say that the digital could help uh, the public for access to culture. It could be useful for libraries and museums. But all in all, we should also remark that a library that encompasses digital is good for digital. So far, we've had a digital, a digital uh, format. Uh, based on the technicalities of those who built the major platforms, uh, people who uh, didn't know Velasquez and uh, the difference between art before and after Giotto. If we have understood that digital can be good for our cultural systems, we might understand and with some pride that our cultural systems can be good for digital. Well, this opens up uh, an important theme, very topical, the uh, national plan for uh, recovery. Italy is a country with a, a cultural uh, arts heritage, museums, the stock of our museums. We have a, a heritage which is formidable and mostly not digitalized and mostly, and even when digitalized, it is not online and made available for the global uh, community, the global community of researchers and for uh, the general public globally at large. There are a few who have uh, the same level of archives. It's interesting to surf. And so let's imagine an archive, an historical archive online. And its meaning with all the research functions available, what it means, what it would mean skipping from uh, surfing from one word to another to follow the, uh, the, 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 the fil rouge of an historical archive. I met the uh, Archbishop of Ravenna a few days ago. He was talking to me about an archive of the Ravenna uh, Archbishop uh, archive with all the historical complete archive they have from uh, the Byzantine times uh, onwards and before. Just think what it means. We're talking about 2,000 years of papers, documents, uh, data. So the digital applied to these sources of items uh, enables you intellectual adventures, which are incredible. Uh, language does not help. It's the problem we have with Italian over the past 700 years. Dante Alighieri and Dante Alighieri. Dante often requires language mediation to be understood. And, and this is possible now with the digital. 
technologies. They are studying uh, software now to digitalize uh, manual uh, scriptures, and this will open up centuries and centuries of history that will be made available. So shall we be able to convey a consistent part of this digitalization process on the artistic and literature heritage. This would be a wonderful uh, prize for Italy, the, uh, the Italy that we have inherited and that we contemporaries deserve very little. With the digital world, we can put all this heritage available to the world and for uh, the global community of researchers to start with, and then it would expand to the uh, general global public at large, because mass consumption for these things is growing. And uh, this, these are the hopes. I'm a pessimist on the money of this recovery and resilience plan, because money can be useful for innovation, but it can also be used to cover problems without really tackling the problems. If there's too much water in uh, a system with too many holes in the pipes, you better um, repair the holes first in the pipes rather than receive the water. So uh, when all this huge flow of money comes, it's a challenge not to throw it away, not to squander that money, but to spend it wisely, as Draghi says, the right debt. He calls it the good debt. May it be a good debt. And this is a very important theme, the adjective good used uh, in uh, an offensive way sometimes. That's right, when we say he's a good man. Yes, we have to admit, Mauro Ilicoli, uh, that when you speak of the, uh, when you speak of this plan as a rebirth plan, uh, rinascita in Italian means rebirth, almost synonymous of renaissance, uh, there's also a magazine called Rinascita. This is a European plan, and Italy plays a major role in this. And uh, the uh, change in the route that Europe has uh, undertaken is important. Important decisions in regulating uh, the digital uh, platforms that come from a culture uh, that Mauro Filicoli mentioned, sensitivity towards what is humane. And this is also seen in the European uh, regulations, platforms, market, digital markets, data. And Florida was involved in managing these new things. And so, this is a premise to ask, once again, another question to Luciano Floridi. How does he assess these changes? Mauro Felicori said there is a risk that it is possible that this is an opportunity for development, but it could be a moment in which problems get covered up and then they will emerge later. At the European level, and with regard to digital regulations, interpretation of the digital and making digital available for the environment and social inclu inclusion and so on, at uh, what point are we? How do you assess this moment in Europe? Are we at a crossroads where we might go in a positive direction or negative direction? And how could we recognize the situation and the positive solutions? I completely agree with Mauro. We are running a risk. The risk is uh, having much money at our disposal, and therefore that this abundance of money is used uh, to um, Uh, to uh, balance and balance the situation, so investing in something where we should not invest. So, I mean, having too much money is uh, still a problem, indeed. Uh, 
that. So we need to be careful about the damages that can be made. Uh, Europe is uh, at a crossroads in this very moment. Uh, uh, I mean, the crossroad, this crossroad uh, is uh, particularly clear in this moment uh, because we are faced with the opportunity to make a few things and to do them well and to do them well from an economic, political and European point of view. Uh, in, easier, in simpler words, Europe needs to relaunch itself as a European uh, Union project uh, and uh, as a new project. We, the European Union ca cannot leverage uh, on the story of the founding fathers. I mean, new generations are used with the idea, uh, I've gotten used with the idea that uh, people are not uh, shooting at each other at the border. So we cannot leverage on this with the new generations. What the European Union needs to leverage on is the new challenges, are the new challenges such as environment, such as digital and equity justice, I mean, a good society with a good environment and with a good politics. This is what European project can be about. I mean, from von der Leyen onwards, uh, um, I mean, the one, uh, von der Leyen Commission has, has taken important steps, uh, determinant steps, uh, which has led to the creation of a legal framework which intends to embrace the digital in all its forms, from AI to data to privacy. These are all small pieces of a full uh, mosaic, and it is a compl an extremely complex task to do because creating such a frame um, requires uh, several years of work. Uh, the so famous GDPR for the protection of privacy requires seven years to be shaped, and we're still testing it. Uh, therefore, working on a 10-year project uh, implies that its implementation will require many other years. These are complex problems which require long-time solutions. And I believe that uh, Europe is tackling with them very well because also European has a, another responsibility because where the European Union puts it, its stake, then this will become a benchmark, a reference point for the rest of the world. So it can really raise the stake uh, of the good practices. So uh, I believe that uh, we can be quite positive on that because I believe that the European Union is doing well, is working well. Sometimes, what I would like, I would, I would like to add something is that Sometimes uh, when uh, we discuss, uh, we, we discuss in theoretical terms, uh, in abstract terms, uh, and, uh, but it's not like this. Uh, I mean, a functioning culture implies uh, a value because uh, if the culture works well, this implies that also the firms, the companies behind it, they work well. So this added value um, is not limited to the cultural sector itself. I mean, when the cultural sector is bringing added value, this added value is then shared by the whole surrounding economic industries. And I believe that in the case of Italy, it is very important to have also a good aesthetics and present itself in a good way. When, some, when I hear someone saying that the culture is too expanding, it's something too expensive which leads to nothing, I believe that these people are very much short-sighted because they do not realize how much is beyond culture. Uh, 
And this is exactly the kind of perspective we hope the majority of people will adopt in the future. And uh, so, of course, this implies an acknowledgement uh, of uh, the Italian culture and its effects all over the world. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you well, thank you. So the fascination around Italian culture is connected, is strictly bound to fascination around Italian products. So very last question for both of you. I kindly ask you to, res to answer very shortly. I was wondering, where do you think uh, should invest in research with the objective of having positive results uh, in all the fields? So, in a research helping educational growth, research helping uh, to understand the value of digital, research helping and enabling to see enhance the value between culture and developer and development research making us more aware Emilia Romagna has invested in big data AI Emilia Romagna has uh, created uh, a deep connected network of uh, telecommunications between different among different territories these are all infrastructural investments so uh, which display a value and which fuel knowledge. But if we had to invest in research, then create knowledge which did not used to exist, where do you think we should invest? I don't know what, but I try to imagine the how. You know that we last met in Modena, where, with a small contribution of mine, we created a university department called Digital Humanities, thanks to the Modena Foundation. And we put together humanists and IT engineers in the same department. When I arrived here, I asked Altea, the company hosting us, it's a regional company. I asked to understand what we need, the things we need to design. Can you please bring together managers and uh, museum managers with IT companies, design companies, software designers, and engineering departments, and do the same thing with um, film directors, actors, and also uh, figurative ars artists, visual artists. We see this now, especially in the visual arts. The dialogue with uh, the digital is very uh, profound. My idea is to create contexts in which they can have a dialogue and understand what the cultural world needs, what its n desires are, what its needs are. And the world of design can provide things that they can provide and we can't even imagine are feasible. We from the world of culture. So we have to start from the overlap of different worlds and then from there uh, bring the water to the seed and the plant and have it grow. So these are my ideas. I can't add anything in terms of content, but this is not uh, little. Maro Filicori, you're saying let's establish the conditions for uh, people to do better than what I can imagine. And this is a wise answer. Luciano Floridi, I can ask you the question in general terms, as I have put it, or more specifically, considering that he's going to be coming to Bologna for research. 
I agree with Philip Corey. Not only is it a question of method, it's not just method. The worst thing you can do is say to those who have ideas what ideas they should have. The programs that don't work are the top-down programs. When you say, uh, we're going to invest on A, B, and C because somebody thought about it, or someone who is 60 and is a little lagging behind on research programs. Cul in the cultural sphere, it, the issue is to enable people to develop the ideas they have. With reference to what Philip Corey says, uh, uh, remove the conditions that um, remove the risks in what you do. In other words, uh, minimize the risks, create, there could be insurance policies, there could be, uh, for instance, free legal services. So try and uh, quash the risks, like in the UK for startups, uh, uh, they say, if you do this, uh, we're going to provide you connectivity, financial, legal advisory, and blah, 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 and then you are free to act. So facilitate uh, undertaking risk and then facilitating the opportunities for success. Of course, because otherwise, if there's too much uh, bureaucracy uh, and too many hurdles, uh, uh, on top of the risks, then, of course, you're not going to do much, are you? So, it, so reduce the risk and facilitate success. And then the program of a project, open project, where the calls for tender are open. And they say, let's hear, Mike, a million euros for 10 projects. Show us your projects. May the best man or woman win. And if one is successful, it pays for all the other nine that may fail. If instead the approach is different, where you throw away your million euros, it's worthless and useless as an approach. So it's a question of method. There have been cases of this. Uh, there have been cases of, let's do this portal top-down. It doesn't work, it has never worked, and you've got to stop adopting that approach. Well, I don't know how to thank Luciano Floridi and Mauro Felicori, uh, 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 the attendance to this last panel of research to business. This has been uh, an extra item of research. We have tried to find new ideas, new thoughts. We have found common ground on many levels. I'm not going to recap what we've discussed. I'm sure that those who have been here uh, viewing and listening, you know exactly what we have been talking about. What we know is that we are faced with a very important moment. Our society is adapting uh, to a change. We were obliged to uh, embrace a major uh, change. We will not be resilient. We will not develop if we don't take this experience and uh, transform what we can do better than others in and do something useful that can be useful for the planet. It is feasible, it is possible. I don't see why we should not be able to do this. So thank you very much for viewing and listening. Uh, see you next time.